Ooh. Oh, that is nice. Oh, hello. I didn't see you come in. My name is Phil Leonard. For decades now, mankind has looked upon the stars, as I was just doing, looking for answers to questions. What is the meaning of life? For what purpose are we here? Why were we put on this planet? And what are we supposed to do with our lives? However, this program will not answer any of those questions. Tonight we will look at stars of a different kind. Music stars. From Mozart to Beethoven, Elvis to Rick Springfield. Musicians have filled the human soul with emotion and passion. Next on that list, of course, super pop group, the Georgie Porges. I'm Phil Leonard, and tonight you will know the entire story. Orphaned at birth, the Georgie Porgies grew up raised by boxcar hobos. It was from there they learned the art of entertaining for every dollar they had. I'm here with Alyssa Fisher, lead member of the Georgia Porgies. Now, Alyssa, what was it like growing up in Georgia? Well, actually, we didn't grow up in Georgia. What? No. We well, named the, the Georgie Porgies. Georgie Porgies. Yes. We named it after um, my little sister's favorite nursery rhyme. Yes. That's very interesting. Now, uh, tell me about your childhood growing up. Where did you grow up, by the way? Well, we grew up in... In New York. New York. So you guys were born in New York? Yes. Um, yes. But I was told you never really met your true parents. Is no. this another lie I was told? Or is it correct? <laughs> it's correct. We never really met our true parents. No. We came boxcar hobos. Yes. Boxcar well, That sounds like a, a fun time. Was it fun? Well, sometimes were fun and others were pretty rough. Well, yes. I can imagine so without having any parental guidance, like a father figure or a motherly mm. figure. Well, we did have a father figure. There was a strange man that we met one day when we were walking along in the woods, and he was a hobo, I believe, and he called, we called him Big Daddy Hobo. Big Daddy Hobo. What's that? The Georgie Porgies? <laughs> I know the Georgie Porgies. They used to live with me. I'm Big Papa, Big Papa Hobo, they used to call me. We used to live right here in this box, this um, good old boxy we used to do. Oh man, were they so cute walking around. I taught them how to shine shoes, the 10 cent shoe shining technique we used to call it. Oh man, we had good times doing that. Well anyway, we lived in five years in the Union Pacific boxcar, and then after that we went to a red box car. I'm pretty sure, it didn't have words, but I'm pretty sure it was red. It was different. No, wait a second. It was blue. I know that for a fact. It was blue. It was a blue box car. <laughs> oh, man. I gotta get going. I believe your first big break was in television, right? In television. It was a sitcom, yes. Tasteless. Was that the name of the sitcom? It was actually yes. called Senseless. Senseless. I'm sorry. We were all in a family, and um, we couldn't smell or taste. And so the premise, you could not smell or taste, couldn't feel anything? Could you, could you hear? Yes, we could hear and we could feel. Personally, I find it odd that those are the two senses that you don't have. I, I don't understand. Why do you have the other three? I don't know. They just started the show. They gave us the premise and we just did it. Hello, Father. Hey, kids. I'll tell you what. The brownie tasting factory was a zoo today. Mr. Picklefeather is working me to death. <laughs> Gee golly, Dad. Ray Ray's having a box show tonight. Can I borrow your car? I don't know. This smells a little fishy to me. How would you know? <laughs> oh, why, you little? I'm gonna wash your mouth out with soap. I can't taste it. <laughs> One of these days, Chris, I'm gonna punch you in the face. His name is Christy. No, it's not. <laughs> I have to say, there's a terribly fascinating story I just told. I know. Okay, I'm here with Ryan and Curtis Fisher. Um, members, not as, not as important as Alyssa Fisher, but they're still members of the group, the Georgie Porties. Now, Ryan, tell me about your life as a member, as a B-list celebrity. Um, really, I bought a mansion for one cent because people said it was haunted. Um, I live with tons of money and money, like a rich man. Ryan, can you demonstrate your world-famous keyboard technique? Because as the viewers know, Ryan Fisher is one of the most highly respected keyboard players of all time. Let's go! Now, 
Curtis. So do you have any celebrity friends or what's the deal? Um, I have John Candy. John Candy? I yeah. believe I believe John Candy is dead. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he is. Oh, you must be John Candy's brother, Ron Candy. Is that the one yeah. you know? Okay. Thanks to my fabulous journalism skills, I was able to get us an inside look on a secret recording session of the Georgie Forties. star and producer of the rock group, the Georgie Forties. Now, describe to me what your relationship is like. Well, basically, I saw the Georgie Forties on their sitcom Senseless, and I knew that they were going to be huge stars. So basically, I got in contact with Alyssa, and we began a musical relationship together that's blossomed <gasps> into something that I would never have imagined. So you should say the success that the Georgie Forties are having is you exceeded your expectations. Oh, yeah. We are the best rock band in the world. We are the best rock band in the world. I'm the Leonard. And now you know the entire story.